Hey, Logan here, creator of Copilot for Obsidian. Usually I don't talk about news here, but I feel that the Gemini announcement didn't get the attention it deserved. OpenAI made a really good move announcing Sora on the same day as Google's announcement. Sora is so awesome, it almost broke the internet. As a result, people are not talking about Gemini that much. So today I'm going to demonstrate the importance of an effective long context window. I will go over the new Gemini 1.5 Pro technical report to show what it means for the future of AI. Let's get started. At the end of my last video, I shared a vision of a simple formula for long context window models. I didn't expect this kind of model popping out so soon. It's mind-blowing how fast AI is moving these days. The reason why this vision isn't a reality today is because there's this thing called loss in the middle. It means that the model retrieves information better at the start or the end of the long context, not at the middle. This was often defeating the purpose of a long context window. For example, Claude has a 200k context window, but in reality, anything longer than 20k has a high probability of getting lost in the middle. This new Gemini 1.5 Pro not only claims it can have a 10 million token context window, it can also perfectly retrieve anything anywhere in that window. That's absolutely insane. To put that into perspective, GPT-4 Turbo has a 128K context window, which is roughly a 300 page book 10 million tokens is 80 times that. Let that sink in for a bit. Aside from that flawless retrieval, it can also generalize zero shot to extremely long instructions. And it's native across different modalities such as text, audio, and video. Zero shot, multi-modality, flawless retrieval. That's like learning all the knowledge from 100 books of average length and be able to apply that knowledge in seconds. It's going to be earth shattering if it really can deliver what it claims. In the intro section, they briefly touched on all the topics from the sections below. So I'm going to go directly to those sections for more details. This new model has a sparse mixture of experts transformer architecture. They've made a bunch of improvements like using a learned routing function to send inputs to the right parts of the model. This means it can handle more parameters without slowing down. In the evaluations, it performed just as good as the Gemini 1.0 Ultra, but it uses way less compute in both training and inference. Let's hope the price will be low. Again, the context window tested was up to 10 million tokens, but they mentioned when they actually release uh, the goal is to have 1 million tokens. 10 million tokens, I guess, is only accessible internally at Google. It can handle different types of data in the same input, like text, audio, video combined. This makes a lot of new use cases possible. There is an example for this down in the next section. Here are some qualitative tests on long context evaluation. The first one is answering questions about a big codebase. The JAX core machine learning codebase has over 746k tokens and 116 files. It was able to understand the question and the code, pinpoint the relevant part accurately. In my experience, GPT-4 Turbo can also do similar things, but when the code is too long, its understanding starts to deteriorate. For this much code, it needs a good rag system to generate intermediate prompts and find the relevant part uh, with the help of embeddings. This demonstration shows that all future models are held to a much higher standard in understanding and reasoning over a super long context. This next example is the one I want to focus on later, so I'm going to come back to it. Figure four shows a user asking the model about a, the book Les Miserables with a hand drawing. It shows a person giving two candles to another person. 
Then the model successfully finds the relevant part in the book in text. This is definitely a superhuman ability. It just understands the hand drawing, successfully maps it to a small piece of text in a huge book. This is the kind of multimodal ability we haven't seen before. This next one is in a similar vein. The user asked the model in both text and a hand drawing. The model was able to retrieve the relevant part from a 44-minute video. You see, people have been struggling to build sophisticated RAG system for this kind of multimodal search. Now they probably should pivot to something else. This next section is mostly running the test called Needle in a Haystack. This is a test first proposed by Greg Kamrat. The idea is pretty simple. Um, he inserts a sentence randomly into a long context and check if the model can retrieve it. Greg has a GitHub repo to automate this test. The target sentence, aka the needle, is the best thing to do in San Francisco is eat a sandwich and sit in Dolores Park on a sunny day. And it is inserted in different positions, or depths as he calls it. He has a great video explaining it. Please go check it out if you're interested in the details. Here in the Gemini report, it is the same idea. The only difference is Google has more money to run it many more times for its statistical significance. In figure 7, we can see GPT-4 Turbo actually did a perfect job up to its full context window of 128k. Gemini 1.5 has a perfect score up until half a million tokens, and only a few misses up to 10 million. Next, we have the same test in video. There's a secret word in text embedded randomly in a video as the needle. GPT-4V API only supports up to 3 minutes of video upload, and it did a perfect job. Gemini 1.5 did flawlessly up to 3 hours. I hope OpenAI will do this test internally soon uh, and show us their full capability, but that probably won't happen until the GPT-5 release. Similarly, we have this same test in audio. This time, since GPT-4 API doesn't have support for audio natively, it needs Whisper to transcribe to text first and then run through the text API, whereas um, Gemini 1.5 supports audio natively. Again, Gemini 1.5 has a perfect score for the full 22 hours of audio, while Whisper plus GPT-4 Turbo didn't do well. I guess it's mostly the failure from Whisper. They probably chose some secret word that Whisper has a hard time transcribing on purpose. Figure 10 shows the so-called multiple needle in a haystack, an upgraded test which requires retrieving 100 unique needles in a single turn. We can see GPT-4 Turbo's recall trending down much faster than Gemini. And Gemini's downward trend is quite steady, up to the 1 million token limit. This is quite a convincing evidence for Gemini's superior retrieval capability throughout it. Now, back to the part I skipped earlier. Um, Gemini 1.5 was given the task to translate this Kalaman language to English. This language has fewer than 200 native speakers worldwide. There's no material online. That means the model had no chance of seeing it during training. And for this task, the model only has access to a grammar book and a dictionary. Here in this table, it shows a side-by-side -side comparison against Claude and GPT-4 Turbo. All models did a very bad job when they don't have any context provided, meaning they all haven't seen this language in their training. So this is a good test to see which one can really learn from their context only. Then with half a grammar book provided as context, GPT-4 scores the worst, 2.38 and 4.02 in human evaluation. Claude scores slightly better than GPT-4 at 3.68 and 4.54.
Gemini 1.5 has the best score 4.16 and 5.38. Of course, the other two models couldn't fit the whole book in their context. Only Gemini has the full book score, which is even higher, close to a human language learner. I think the significance of this test is the greatest in this whole report. It shows that Gemini can truly learn from really, really long and complex instructions. Think about we as humans reading a big ass grammar book of 573 pages for the first time. How well can we translate the language? I guess very badly. This human language learner in this comparison is most likely not new to this language. So when we say it approaches a human language learner, what we are really saying is the model sees a completely new material for the very first time and it reached a level of a human who studied it for quite a while. The significance of this is not to be overlooked. It gives me a feeling similar to when I saw GPT-4 for the first time. In the near future, this kind of AI will enable a ton of new use cases. After this, they evaluated the new model on core abilities like reasoning, math, science, multilinguality, coding, and instruction following. The new 1.5 Pro model beats the old 1.0 model by a large margin and even beat the 1.0 Ultra slightly on all text-based tasks. One thing I find sneaky is that they don't compare the model's core ability against GPT-4, such as math, reasoning, coding, etc. They were only comparing against their old models. The GPT-4 comparisons remained in the retrieval and the Calaman translation part. But given that they said uh, Gemini 1.5 Pro beats even 1.0 Ultra at coding, and based on their video demo, it should be more or less comparable to GPT-4 in reasoning. Again, to clarify, most of us will get access to the 128K window when it releases. Only early testers has access to the 1 million token uh, window. And 10 million is for Google internal use only. Cost-wise, uh, it's still unknown, but if we assume that it's comparable to the current Gemini 1.0 Pro, it should be anywhere from $5 to $10 for a full 1 million token interaction. Sam here has early tester access and has posted two awesome videos testing it out. Please go check them out. My takeaway is that the model looks as good as advertised, and it may take up to one plus minute for a longer context such as a full book. But in reality, we don't really need that long of a context for every turn of the interaction. This is generally not a huge issue if the model's reasoning and retrieval over the context is good. I've already joined the waitlist, and when it releases, I will immediately add it to Copilot for Obsidian for you guys. So finally, let's answer this question. Is RAG really dead? Uh, I think the answer is no. For a smaller scale use case such as personal knowledge management, like talking to your Obsidian vault, I think a local RAG is still very useful in terms of cost, privacy, and efficiency. But for a more complex interaction like a very long instruction or an agentic behavior, I think the model will win over RAG. In summary, I don't think this kind of model will kill RAG. Their true significance lies not in perfect retrieval, but in the growing ability to leverage a long and complex instruction to do a brand new task it hasn't seen before like that Calaman translation. I hope this release gives OpenAI the pressure to release GPT-5 sooner. Let's see. Okay, I hope I have given a good overview of this new Gemini model. I'm Logan, an engineer who's committed to make AI accessible to everyone. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content. Bye for now.